labor supply over the life cycle. In the last discussions, we have seen a static analysis about workers' decision to work or not and how many hours to work. Apart from the static analysis, here we want to see labor supply over the life cycle. What do we mean by the life cycle is that we are considering the position of the labor supply over a long period. Life cycle of a worker, for example, may start from, let's say, the age of 25 up until, let's take the standard retirement age in Malaysia, 60 years old. Given this life cycle as a worker, how do you allocate the level of leisure and consumption over the life cycle? That's what we want to understand in this analysis. The trajectory of the two allocations would be different when we look at it from a life cycle analysis. Here we have two diagrams to understand the life cycle path of which an hours for a typical worker. The left side diagram, this is sometimes referred as the age earning profile. Look at the label for the vertical and horizontal axis. Over here, the vertical line is label which rate and the horizontal line measures the age of the worker over the life cycle. On the right side diagram, the vertical line measures hours of work while the horizontal line measures the age of the workers. Between these two diagrams, only the horizontal line measures the same indicator that is the age of the worker. However, for the vertical line, the two are different. The left diagram is called the age earning profile. Let's focus on this left diagram first. Notice that when we are young or when this worker is young, maybe from the age of 20 to 30 years old, the wage rate is low. So what we can say here is the wage rate for a young worker is usually low compared to a much senior workers. And what this means is leisure for young workers is cheap. So that's one thing we note from this diagram. And as the worker gets older, the level of wage rate starts to increase. And therefore, for this much older workers, his leisure now starts to get more and more expensive. Indicated in this diagram is that when this worker reaches the age of 50 years old, his wage reach to the highest level, peaking when he is 50 years old. So at this age, leisure is the most expensive for this worker. What that means is that when the wage rate is higher at this age level, we will find that this worker would allocate more hours working rather than more hours for leisure. And as we continue further, Beyond the age of 50 years old, we will find that the curve starts to slightly decline. The price of leisure also starts to decline. So what we notice here is some form of pattern from the young age of the worker to his middle age until he becomes a more senior worker nearing the retirement age level. The shape of this age earning profile shows us what we call as the evolutionary wage, where wage levels change over time for a particular worker. One thing to note about evolutionary wage is that it has no impact on the worker's total lifetime income since the worker expects the trend. Now let's focus on this right side diagram. Notice that the changing price of leisure over the life cycle implies that the worker will relatively work more hours when the wage is high and fewer hours when the wage is low. There is some form of relationship between the left side diagram and the right side diagram. From the statement earlier, we find that as the wage rate gets higher over here, gets higher, 
And that's happen when the worker gets to a much older age. We will find that workers, as they become more senior, they would spend more hours working. One explanation we get from the analysis is that as the workers get older, leisure becomes more and more expensive. So what we will find here is that the life cycle of labor supply implies that hours of work and the wage rate should move together over time for a particular worker. Therefore, from that conclusion, we find that the shape of the two curves here are similar. Here, I make a quick comparison between the life cycle hypothesis and also the static one period analysis that we have done earlier. When we look at our static analysis earlier, that analysis involves a change in which, and that is due to two major effects, the substitution effect and the income effect. In the long run analysis involving a life cycle analysis, we are looking at an evolutionary wage change. And this is expected and therefore does not change the lifetime opportunity set of the worker. This therefore will not change in terms of worker's decision involving his consumption level. When we look at the static one period analysis, whenever there is an increase in wage that would expand a worker's opportunity set. That means as wage gets higher, the worker now would have more time for leisure and even much higher level of consumption. Hence, create an income effect that leads to higher level of leisure. In contrast, as I have mentioned earlier, in a life cycle analysis, because the worker expect that type of trajectory of his life cycle income, therefore that would not affect the worker's lifetime opportunity set. So that's the conclusion for the analysis that we have done today. Inshallah, in the next discussion, we will proceed further with another type of analysis.